Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie Ina, in case it wasn't painfully obvious. Jagged, 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 jagged. I'm having a real good old funky time doing some of these celebrity recreations, especially some of the looks that like I probably wouldn't normally wear. The first video I did was Summer Walker. I recreated her album cover for her album Over It and she commented on it. Thank you, Summer, for showing me. So today I thought it'd be fun and interesting to react and hopefully not fail at Rico Nasty's Guide to Bold Brows, Fake Freckles, and Galactic Highlighter, Beauty Secrets. I love the Beauty Secrets segment on Vogue. I'm putting it out into the atmosphere into the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be on one one day, but until then, I just like to enjoy the ones like the gals Rico Nasty. I'm, I really enjoy these celebrity recreations. I like to see how people who aren't normally known for makeup do their beauty routine. I'm just interested. We're all naturally just nosy. Let's jump right in. I feel like my looks are normally gone. Okay, so where's the primer? Dark. Where's the primer? I a lot of under eye stuff. Like me too, but, but where's the primer? I really love the glitters. I love where's the primer? Um, skin is very important to me. Her skin, skin does look good very though. Important to me. Okay, the way that she prepped her skin, I was a little triggered. Just watch, just watch what she about to do. And now, I do not blend it in first. I literally do all the skincare at one time. She mixes her primers and her skincare at the same time. I personally don't think oil is enough to just be your day-to-day -day skincare, but that's what she does. I'm gonna do it too. Now, I ordered this Revolution Primer. I like to use exactly what the person I'm copying is doing whenever I react to these videos. But I ordered that primer like three weeks ago, girl. She still ain't here. Blame it on the Rona. It looks to me like it's something gel-based and it's something water-based ish vibes you know the vibe i just grabbed milk hydro grip i feel like it probably would do the same thing or similar and i just really like the primer anyway girl you doing a lot girl you stressing me out now this is her third oil yeah i know i'm i'm already drippy next she took the anastasia hydrating oil the second oil that she used i scoured Beyonce's internet looking for it and I could not find it. I'm just gonna use the Anastasia Hydrating Oil and I bought this simply for the, ooh. I bought this, guys, primer and oil. Are we doing a lot? We'll find out on today's episode of Why Did I Get Married? Now she's like, she must have dry skin because I wouldn't want my primer mixed in with an oil. That's just me and my portion though. If you think oil is enough to be considered skincare, it's not. Oh my goodness, I'm so embarrassed. Oil seals moisture, so please still moisture Use the oil last. It shouldn't be just your I hope she doesn't rely on just oils for skincare. This does for really not somebody to figure it all. Like I'm looking at it feeling good. I just normally wouldn't want to be this oil slick before a makeup application. I really want a powder. Like I'm really tempted to just go in with Miss Laura Mercier and set all this down, but we're gonna do this Rico's way. Probably should shave my mustache though. My bad, y'all. Okay, what's next? The foundation. The foundation. I went out and bought the Huda Beauty. What's this foundation called? the only one they have, the Huda Beauty Foundation. I actually did a review on this when it first launched. I feel like they sent me the darkest shades on purpose though, cause I was talking all that crap about how Huda was really trying it for a long time, cause she was never gonna let up on that. I think she's done much better job at representing women of color on her platforms and men of color on the platforms. As of recently, I've kind of slowly been like creeping into using her products. Which brings me to this foundation, which is the one Rico was wearing. I remember them giving me like 550 or like 530. It was definitely not my color. So I went out and bought 500, which is Mocha. We gonna see what Mocha's talking about. Oh my God, I'm so, oh, my skin's pilling. I hate when this happens. So sometimes if your skincare products like aren't compatible with each other, they start to like break up and pill. Do you guys see it's so annoying? Let me just go get a paper towel. It's these damn oils, Rico! Why'd you do this? If you've ever had this happen, the more you rub it though, the more it breaks up. So it can get really annoying. So if you just kind of lightly graze your paper towel over, those little balled up products will come right off. But this Huda Beauty is really fire. And if I'm not using Huda Beauty, then I'm using Fenty Beauty. Okay, so she's a fan of Huda. She's a fan of Fenty. So she likes coverage. So the shade that I told you I'm using is Mocha. Also, the one thing that I don't particularly care for for this foundation is that it has a very strong scent. I don't mind scent in my products. I just don't feel like it's necessary in foundation though. Oh, this color is so much better already. But should I powder first? Rico. Can I please put on some chest powder, please? Really tempted to powder, but I'm not going to. Trying to change my problematic ways. She clearly has dry skin because there is no way. But yeah, we're gonna do the same thing we did. I don't like the squirting the foundation. I get why people do it, but I feel like you have more control when you place 
the product on with your hands. Oh my God, this foundation smells so strong. Now I'm already at a disadvantage. I don't have shaved brows. She shaves off her arches, so we're gonna have to make some moderations when we get there. I started doing my own makeup when I found out that I was pregnant. And then I started- Oh my God, as a kid, I forgot she is a mom. Oh my God, I love her even more. She seems like such a cool mom. Like you could raid her closet and wear her clothes and she wouldn't care. Babe, I'm doing a Rico Nasty inspired look. I'm gonna be an e-girl. An e-girl? An e-girl. What's that? I don't know, honestly. Okay, so coverage is looking nice. I still feel really shiny, shinier than I'm used to. And I know that this foundation is matte. So it must have been the skin, it must have been the wind. It must have been skin prep and the wind. I'm gonna do what I used to do whenever I found a foundation to be a little too oily. And I just blot off the first layer with a paper towel. That looks so much better already. So much better. So that, this foundation ain't too bad. The next step that I'm gonna do is concealer. Okay, um, next is concealer. My things right now for concealer right now is this palette. I don't have that palette. Disgusting right now. And I'm using this today. It's by NARS. She's also foundation. using Soft NARS Matte Complete. Soft Matte Complete. So she color corrects and I scoured the internet for a color correcting slash highlighting slash contouring palette that all of the shades would fit me for each step and I couldn't find anything. So I just grabbed individual products for this because I color correct anyway. Now normally you're used to seeing me color correct with like a concealer, right? Like something with a little orange, a little red, flaming hot Cheetos. She's color correcting the old fashioned way with like an orange cream stick or orange cream powder. So I took my Live Tinted Hue Stick in the shade Rise Up. I just take a little bit of that, take it straight under the eyes, honey, no chaser. So when you have dark circles, this is kind of the first thing that you wanna do to like flush them out. This is what we call correcting. This orange is gonna correct the dull color underneath the eyes. That's gonna still peep through my concealer. I prefer this for my face. Like whenever I'm correcting the jawline, for under eye though, I wouldn't use this, but it's okay, because we have it and we're gonna make it work. Now we're applying the regular concealer right on top of that red. Then she conceals. And I haven't used or seen a lot of people talk about this concealer. It's the Soft Matte Complete from NARS. I feel like she kind of came and went, but it's actually a beautiful formula. I'm gonna take this brush from Hourglass. She is really good for really small containers and digging in little areas like that. And I'm gonna take the color Amand and slap that on right over where we applied the orange, but like also apply a lot of it because we wanna cover that fully completely truly indubitably this concealer is so pretty and velvety did she highlight her forehead hold on she did highlight her forehead we go we highlight our five heads in this congregation can i cheat and do it anyway no nah, i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna do it i'm gonna get my chin though <laughs> when in doubt sponge it out i'm gonna blend but you already know like this is only layer one of concealers right i didn't say i couldn't layer more of what rico's using I just said I have to use the exact same products. So after that, I'm gonna put a little chestnut on top to make her pop a little bit more. Oh my God, I forgot how beautiful. Her skin at like every angle just looks supple and dewy and pretty. It's my setting powder and I have Huda Beauty. Oh my God, finally, she's putting on translucent powder. Thank you, God. Thank the Lord. I don't mind my base right now, but I'm fiending, fiending for some powder. I already have the Huda powders and between blonde and banana bread. I feel like banana bread is just enough yellow. The color is actually a little bit closer to a beige. So I'm gonna use banana bread and this is Huda's powder. She bakes for real for real. How you gonna have dry skin and well, then bake like that? For a, while. a lot of people tell me that you're supposed to leave it on for a couple seconds. I'm gonna leave mine on while I'm done. Come on. She uses a lot of powder and she also sits it on there. That don't look good when I do it. So I'm gonna put just, an, just enough powder to make her do what it do and to like dry me down. But I can't, I, I can't, it just has everything to do with my eye shape. I feel like it accentuates the texture under my eyes even more when I bake. And this is a pretty heavy powder. So I'm skipping all that. One, two, three, four. Put your powder on the floor. Now that I'm powdered down, I already feel better. This is an instant mood booster for me is translucent powder, like being mad it down sweetie okay not too mad because you know i do love a skin moment 
To be completely honest with you, I remember going to a Mario Didovanovic makeup workshop like years ago. I'm talking like 2013. It was so long ago. And I remember him being asked a question in the audience, how to prep skin for people who are really oily. When he did his demo, it was like, girl, that's cute. But like, what about those with some oily skin? He actually says that he gets the skin so like oil slick and wet. And then he heavily powders the face after. So the powder's got some to stick to so he actually does the opposite of what you would think instead of using like super matte super drying powders he just powders a lot and I kind of feel like with Rico's technique I just did the exact same thing now I didn't see her powder her forehead but I'm gonna go ahead and do that anyway I leave this on for a little while a lot of people tell me that you're supposed to leave it on for a couple seconds I'm gonna leave mine on when I'm done cooking. then she contours while she bakes I grab one of my Fenty bronzers okay that's definitely from NARS which means it's probably a bronzer, so I'm going in the right direction. She didn't even show what she did. She just went straight into the nose. I'm gonna bronze the way I always do, and that is just below the cheekbones, the bones. And then I took a little bit of Mocha Mami because it's got just enough definition that I need. This is what I use when I need a little bit more color. Cause Coco Daddy, what's one? this is Coco Naughty. I'm sorry, not Coco Daddy. Thinking about my man. Coco Naughty's cute, but like Mocha Mommy is just a tad too dark and Coco Naughty is just a tad too light. So I like to use them together. But of the two, if I had to pick, I would use Coco Naughty. Um, next I'm gonna do my eyebrows, which is kind of weird. Cause I've never done my eyebrows in front of people. And imagine that. Yeah, don't make me nervous. Right now I'm a really, really, really big fan of the straight eyebrows. Okay, I can't do that. Okay, so she shaves back her brows as I mentioned earlier, which gives that straight fanned out brow illusion. I ain't shaving my brows back. I like this look on her and I wish that we could do the same thing. What I will do is use my dip brow because she is using what looks like a cream brow product. So I am using what looks like a cream brow product. How does she do it with just like no pencil, nothing? No reinforcement, no straight stencils, eyebrows. no shaping of the brow. You just go right in with dip brow. Did she really do that? I respect it, Rico. You know what, I will say, it probably is a little bit easier to do a straight brow with dip brow as opposed to a pencil, because pencil, you have to have a really, really steady hand. I have chocolate and I have dark brown. Oh, I'm so obsessed with her brows. I wish, wish I could just, could I just, no, I'm not gonna do it. All right, cat daddies, here goes nothing. This is for all you dip brow stands out there. Anastasia, don't fail me now. Okay, she ain't too bad. She does shape the brow with concealer. So, you know, if I make some mistakes, then I'm calling on reinforcements. Remember the dip brow era? Like, wow, that really was an unstoppable time for all of us mutually. I haven't done this in a long time. I mean, I did it recently just for kicks, but I feel like I'm relearning something. You know what's hard about using a brow pomade is when you have an arched brow, as opposed to like just going straight across, it's the curvature that gets tricky, man. My brows are a little dark than what I'm used to, but I can work around this. Oh yeah, we gonna clean that all the way up and she's gonna be real cute too. All the tools are ABH by the way. I'm now going back to my Amand, my Amand Soft Matte Complete Concealer and a flat brush and I'm gonna etch all this away. That was easier than I thought it would be. Let me go ahead and do the next brow. Now this is the Fenty Beauty and this is like, like, you feel me? Like, what? I do, I do feel yeah. you. Now, the thing with what a brat is, as beautiful as it is, it's quite light and it's quite silvery. Obviously, Rico is quite lighter than me, so I'm a little worried that this much is gonna be atrocious. Let me tread lightly. I'm gonna start off with a little bit and I'm gonna build it up the way that she did. I'm gonna hope and pray for the best. Oh, it's silver. It's literally silver. Ah! The way that she highlights is a lot like the way that I highlight. She goes in and she kind of follows the natural curve, the C shape of the side face profile. Put on a lot, y'all. It does look really phenomenal on her skin. I just feel like what a brat on my complexion is better used as like an accent and not something that I would comfortably wear on its own just because it's so silvery. I don't think it looks bad and I'm kind of getting like festival vibes. Let's see how I look at my phone, cause it's kinda cute. That's kinda cute! This part was actually my favorite part of her whole tutorial, the way that she highlights. We are living in a Rico Nasty world and I'm a Rico Nasty girl. I'm gonna go in with the other one. Another one. So if y'all don't remember, Sangria Sunset was Fenty's spring, or I think it was summer, it was summer. Pretty sure it was summer. This came out in her summer, oh, wow. 
Let me chill. I really gotta chill. This is a lot. Wow. It's giving very fantasy. This is the type of makeup you would wear like on stage because you want everybody to see it from the back row. When I'm on stage, I feel like not a lot of people can really see the details in my makeup. Exactly. She so just said it. It's super important for me to make sure my makeup is like, it's extra. It has to be extra. Even when I'm gonna also pop some Sangria Sunset on my forehead area. This is giving me like Little Mermaid. Now in the name of, this is a celebrity recreation, but it should still be flattering and pretty. I'm gonna do a little bit of trickery because I feel like as pretty as this looks, it's feeling a little textured here. So I'm gonna go back to my translucent powder. And what I like to do is called the buffing technique, courtesy of Sonia and Faiza on the gram. I love them. Whenever you feel like you just have like a lot of product over your face or like if you put on too much blush or too much anything, you can take a little bit of translucent powder over like a blending brush just like this one and just kind of just buff and go right over it. And it's not gonna completely erase it, but it will kind of soften it a little bit and keep it from looking as harsh. And I already feel better about this immediate area because I felt like it was starting to look a little texture for my liking. Is Gonna do my oh girl, slow down, slow down. Now she's putting white eyeliner. She didn't even give us an eye look. I'm here for this. It's more about the skin. It's more about the blush, all this going on up here. I don't have a white liner. And even if I did, I wouldn't want to use one. I'm gonna take Infinite Sand from Makeup Forever. It's an off-white. Pop that into my waterline if you don't mind if I do. Can I use some purple mascara? Purple mascara, check. So she's going in her bottom lash line with purple mascara. Purple mascara is so slept on. Like, I don't know why I don't use more frequently, but definitely slept on. Why do I feel like I can't see anything? Do y'all see the purple? Please tell me you do. It looks vibrant in person, but girl, on camera, she's giving you subtle, like my skin, but better. And I don't like that. It's like really purple on her. So I'm gonna grab another mascara and try to get this to pop a little bit more. While the mascara's still wet, I'm gonna take a little bit of purple shadow for my palette. I'm probably gonna use Shookington. It's shimmery, so I'm hoping that it'll kind of make the purple leap a little bit better. And I'm gonna just lay it right on top of my lashes. I'm just trying to get the purple to actually show up and show out. Cause right now she's playing hide and seek. I also realized just now that I forgot a step earlier, she did some reverse contouring. So she took her translucent powder and her sponge and she just followed the natural contours of her cheekbones just to get this to look nice and precise. And this is something that I do frequently. So I'm just gonna do this, do my next step, and then let this sit for a little bit. <coughs> this powder. I'm gonna take my Smashbox primer water. I'm gonna spray it inside of this. I'm gonna put it right here. Literally. It's Got just that. a little bit of water. I don't even know. Got to concealer. Right I'm gonna take this brush, swirl it around. This is how we're gonna get my freckles. So this is a really cute way she DIY freckles. She takes a cream concealer or contour. I grabbed dark coffee from NARS and then she takes her Smashbox primer water and she just wets the product. Then she takes a, she didn't say what kind of brush. I'm just kind of going with it. She takes a little small eyeshadow brush and swirls it around in the product and then creates a little freckle recipe. How much do we freckle though? Oh, she freckles a lot. Okay, let me keep going. So in doing makeup and constantly being able to change and look different every day, I feel like it's become somewhat of a coping me mechanism and helping me to love myself. Curious, me sis. Okay, my freckles are kind of looking more like moles. I went, whoa, these, these, are, these are really big. I'm just gonna like take a little brush. I'm just trying to blur them a little bit so they don't look obvious, but they kind of do. I fumbled. So I went a little freckle heavy, but I think if you give me six feet, which is what you should be doing anyway, social distancing, give me six feet and halfway blink one eye. You can't really tell. Kind of look, it look good. I think it looked close enough. So this is like from milk makeup. And um, this is just like, let's see, I'm gonna put I have these tattoo stamps for milk. Um, for some reason, the one that she's using is Stars, and I think that one might be discontinued because I had that one and then I didn't think I would ever use it, so I gave it away. I went on the Sephora website and looked for that same one. She was gone, so I'ma just say she was discontinued. Instead, I bought the Zodiac symbol for Leo's because your girl's a Leo. Wait, is it Rico Nasty? 
be Leo? Oh my God, let me Google this. She's a Taurus. Okay, she's not a Leo. I still fools with it anyway. I like Tauruses. Two of my sisters are Tauruses. Did she evenly place her stars? She did. It looks way cooler because she shaved off her brow because she's basically stamping upwards. I can't do that because I don't have half. Oh my God, I didn't press all the way. Oops. I'm gonna wipe off the first one. Okay, so we're gonna do one more stamp right here. That's so cute. It looks weird on me, but it's cute. Too. I'm so scared. Girl, aren't we all, girl? Wow, and she puts on her lashes without an applicator? Rico, girl, we knew you were that chick, but we didn't know you was about that life. You know what they say about people who put on their lashes without an applicator? Y'all be starting fights and ending fights. I'm honestly scared of y'all. I don't know the lash that she's using, but as for me at my house, I'm gonna use Saucy from Batty B. I do have a code, by the way, and these are some of my favorite lashes. My code is edges. Edges as in the hair around your perimeter of your face. That kind of edges. Oh, this is a great angle. This is great. This is a great angle. <laughs> I was closely looking at Rico's look and the way that she placed her little milk makeup stamps were nowhere near the eyebrow arch like I put them on. They're actually a little bit closer to the temple area like back here. I can't really place it the same way she did because I have a full brow and my brows don't go out that way. I'm gonna take this off and re-stamp again. I wipe them off with a little bit of tissue first and then I'm just gonna reshape under my brow with my concealer again. Like it never happened. Let's stamp, I don't know what you're talking about. Ha <laughs> ha, let's do this again. I still wanna know how the hell she put on her lashes without an applicator. I mean, like I could do it if I really have to, but if it's a thick lash, it's easy to do. She did it with like one of those thin disposable lashes. Rico, I need answers. I think I'm gonna put one here. Actually, yeah, let's do back here. That's cute. That looks way better. It looks like I'm tatted, but well, I guess that's kind of the point. <laughs> and while my lash glue dries again, I think we about good to start blending this out. Instead of applying like individual lashes on her bottom lash line, she just drew in the illusion of thicker lashes with a eyeliner. Now this is best done with a felt tip eyeliner because you have a little bit more control versus like a really wet one that's slippery and slither and suck attached. Pardon my pores, but I'm gonna get real close and please excuse my freckles, I try. Try not to pull too much. If you have to pull the face like she is, I'm gonna take a blending puff and hold the skin taut and then draw one line, one line, and then another line. Like she draws these little sprouts and because my lashes are kind of long, I'm gonna draw them really long. So she does one on the outside, one on the middle, and then one on the inner corner. The lines weren't even perfect or anything. She just kind of went for it. And I like that she's not correcting any mistakes or anything. She's just like, who cares? Plus she's also a performer. So ain't nobody gonna be in her face looking that deep anyway. And if you are, you need to back up because we social distancing. I feel like I'm drawing crow's feet in my eyes. <laughs> this looks very, like pumpkin patch, like very doll-like. And I'm not mad at it, but it is very extra. Seems like some of this got a little lost, so we're just adding on another coat. Now I'm gonna finally put on my falsies, bottoms up. I'm a little bit less of a risk taker than Ms. Rico is, and I'm gonna use my applicator. I'm gonna dry my mascara first. Is her name really Rico? Maria Cecilia Simone Kelly. So I wonder where Rico came from. Oh my gosh, she was born in 1997. Sis, I'm a whole decade older than you. Like, wow, our power. Oh my gosh, she's real. I just, the math fully mathed in my head. She's 22? Oh, this is so, <laughs> this is so cute. I feel like I look like a doll. Not a single stitch of eyeshadow and yet, this still feels like a complete look. I didn't quite catch what she was putting on in her inner corner. It looked like some type of cream, pencil, eyeshadow situation. So I'm just gonna go back to What A Brat again. And you know, I do love inner corner highlight, girl. Like kind of deep set in this area. So it looks a little hollow when there's nothing there. So I kind of rely on that shadow to help bounce. Throw it back. Not like that, but. Anyways, the only thing that Vogue slacks on is they don't ever put the list of ingredients or anything like that, which I mean, why would they? It's Vogue, like they don't make money off of that. I'm sure they're not checking for affiliate links, but still it'd be helpful, just a tad Vogue. Just sign up for reward style, you know you want to. Next step, we're gonna line my lips. Finally, we are at the lips. Now I cannot use a light pink liner like she is. I'm just gonna use BFF3 from ColourPop because she's my skin tone shade. If I were to go in with a color like the one that she's using, it would look not that cute. It would look like dry lips. Honestly, this is what we're doing. We're going around the parts that's dry, like this shit right there. We're literally going around that. Don't get it to touch the top of your lips. That'll defeat the purpose. 
What she just did is an ombre lip. Like you could just basically use any lip color. What it looked like she was using was like a milk makeup crayon lipstick situation. But I went on the website, couldn't find, went on Sephora.com, couldn't find. Must be discontinued, must've been a win. But it looked like kind of a raspberry pinkish kind of tone. The closest thing that I could find that was in like a crayon form was my Lift Tinted Six, again, coming through. The shade that I'm gonna be using is Free. It's actually their new shade. It's absolutely freaking stunning. Just absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm gonna mainly concentrate the color in the inside of my lips. We don't want it to go all the way up to our cupid's bow, because again, ombre lip. We're creating gradual color. Now the way that you can do that is just take your finger and smudge it out. You kind of like want to make it look like you Kool-Aid or popsicle stained your lips. Okay, we need a gloss. She didn't say what kind of gloss, so. And I also peep, she did put something on that Cupid's bow. I know Rico, you didn't call it out, but I could tell, I could tell I could peep it. I'm gonna need to grab Water Brat one more time. Based on the lip gloss that she's wearing, it's white and it looks like it shifts pink and maybe gold. The closest thing that I could find was this gloss from Pat and it is in the shade Future Femme. I'm gonna go around where we applied Free, AKA the raspberry in the center and apply the gloss everywhere else. That is dead on. She didn't show the gloss. I mean, all I could see was like the top. I'm good, but I'm not that good. I just had to take an educated guess. This is looking very cosmic, very xenon. Oh, these glasses are so good. I think we're done. I'm gonna do my hair. We're done. We're not going to a show. We're not going to the club. We're not going on a date until you have taken a shower with your primer water outside the shower. Okay. I said that, I mean like... I know it was expensive, so you don't wanna put that much on your face, but you have to. Primer water is definitely not a product I put a lot of love into, but I do like it. And she clearly loves the stuff because she used it like three different ways in this tutorial. That is our final look. So Rico says she wanted to look like a cartoon character. I feel like we accomplished that. And I mean that in a good way. Like this looks very doll-like, very cartoon-like. And the rest of the video, she went on to do her hair, but my hair's already done. So by golly, that's it, we're done. Okay, so this is really fun. I. Once again, cannot stress enough how much I live for the Vogue Beauty Secrets series. I hope they continue it, hopefully as soon as they can. Life is back to normal again. Ironically enough, I first heard of Rico Nasty because people were tagging me in a post saying that I look like her. I've heard it like periodically, but then again, people say I look like everybody pretty much like every other day. It's actually kind of annoying. I'm tired of it actually. Like who who else? Add it to my bar tab. Okay, yeah. Her too? All right, get in line with the rest of them. Got it. But this makeup look, I feel like I am channeling her a little bit. I'm here for it. It's really cute. And I'm just shook at the fact that she didn't touch any eyeshadow. Like I know eyeshadow is not for every look, but this is just really pretty. It doesn't feel incomplete. And I feel like any complexion can rock this look. It's super cute. Miss Rico, you might need to consider becoming a beauty vlogger. I'll recruit you. You want any bonuses, incentives? Get into the skin though. Get into this glow though. Is this what it feels to cosplay? Cause I'm feeling a little cosplay-ish right now. Anyway, I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm about to take a bunch of selfies cause I'm feeling myself, girl. Thank you guys so much for watching. Rico, if you happen to see this, I love you and I love your music. Thank you for watching if you do. And if you're not Rico Nasty and you watched anyway, thank you as well. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up though. Like I put so much work and I actually have to actively order products to make these videos, to pull off these videos. So if you like them, Please say thank you by giving my video a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you're part of the Jack Anna family. I don't understand why you wouldn't be. Hello? We already know you watched five videos. Just be honest. The sooner you can be honest, the sooner you can get rid of all your other problems. How about that? And since you're done here, go ahead and watch another video because we already know this is what you're gonna do anyway. We know you have a Jackie Anna playlist of nonstop content. I know you do. So just indulge. And if you need more video ideas, here's one right here. Just click.